Hello and welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Point. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our adventures of a blind playthrough in Legendary Difficulty. <clears throat> I am pleased to see another scavenging site as one of our biggest problems in this run is actually to get the resource management right. I do have ideas of how to improve and would I do it uh, all over again I potentially would do it a bit different but it is what it is and we're now where we are so no need to lament what hasn't been working well it's actually going reasonably well so far cool so we're going to take that scavenger side but we're fighting against the forsaken which i don't immediately remember what uh, who they were but we bring our a-team squad so what could possibly go wrong uh, we got the right um, the right number of people here you can also see strengths looking good for most of the characters 220 hit points is very respectable Let's just double check if I'm missing an important ability. Onslaught, by the way, fantastic ability. Um, broader ability. I like that 50% extra melee damage and for 10 points it's a steal. Still waiting for a second class here. Grell isn't the explosive expert, so don't need that. The PDWs were, would be fine. I think that would be an interesting option for Grell, just to get one um, ability point, um, uh, one ability point actions. But adrenaline, adrenaline rush and uh, rage burst are so good, and she's close to a level up. So I will just wait. And finally, Mr. Euler. Weak spot is good. I like it. But then again. Marked for death is fantastic and rapid clearance. Recover two action points for each enemy killed until the end of the turn. Wow, that's good. How much does that cost? Waypoint five. Okay, cool. We're deploying. Good, we landed. So we're sort of in the middle. Eh, not very lucky with all of the boxes. What we want to do is get out of here soon-ish. Let's see who is going to be the ones Shattered Realm and who was the other uh, with Jump Legs, Ian the Butcher Owens. So for starters we're instilling Frenzy. Ian then jumps over. What is that thing? Good, we got a bit of <coughs> ammunition here. Forsaken Berserker. It looks like a gargoyle. Okay. Good. It would be great if we were to get further crates, but it seems like we're out of luck here. No easy grabs. Which is a bit of a shame. There are two over here, so that's likely where we should be going. Dranks, sprints. Then sprints again. <clears throat> then moves in, gets five uh, will points back. Then I realize that he very much has uh, a full inventory. And yeah, we're 
could potentially just move on out. Like I said, there is no point in staying around for too long. There's an assault. Interesting. Okay. Putting our sniper near the exit zone. Putting our other sniper also near the exit zone. One. Two. Can't jump in. But we can loot uh, that stuff. I'm not sure if that was a mistake. He does not have... Oh, well, he does have freeloading. Okay, cool. I tell you what, we're just going to shout that takes two action points away uh, from the Berserker so he can't simply run up to us and kill us. Moving to here. Aiming for the tentacle torso. And what we're going to do is we are Overwatching. using sniper rifles to overwatch. Holding position. And Ian just literally drops down. Good, I think next turn we can almost move out. Maybe Shattered Realm will not directly be able to move out, but we'll, we'll find that out in a second. This guy used a med kit, <coughs> which per definition means he has wasted his action and the berserker yeah, failed to do anything meaningful no exits on this side for shattered realm so really we're moving as far as we can then it's a jump Then it's another jump. And then we're moving to here. Cool. Uh, out of here good dilly Goes for the leg, <clears throat> hits the torso instead. Need 
to try again. That guy now has cool. We got extra poison shots infected by virus, but he's bleeding, so he'll die regardless. And we're running out. Okay. Could we have uh, recovered more? maybe but then it would be a longer fight and the one thing that i noticed with these missions is <clears throat> i might be wrong with my assessment but not shooting a lot uh, already gives you in itself already gives you in itself quite a hefty bonus Because you're not using all of the materials. Good. We're evacuating. So it gives you uh, already a bonus for, in terms of opportunity, because uh, you're not spending all of the material to refill ammunition. Not getting injured saves you a lot of money, and I. With a cyborg, I can definitely uh, be a testimonial of that. So that in itself is... Uh, you would risk all of this for essentially getting the other half of these resources. Experience-wise, you would get 140 more experience. Okay, cool. That's not bad. I get it. And would uh, push them further, maybe even to level up. So you could argue for that. But then you're essentially trading experience that they're getting for for a for less uh, monetary reward. So I guess in that sense it's balanced. Of course, in a perfect world, um, you could uh, get even more resources. But then. Think about it the following, if I want to harvest all of the resources, I would potentially need to have almost empty bags, which makes the mission much more dangerous. The way that I'm currently doing them, the quick in and out, seems to work quite well. And this here is already 60 materials just for um, just for the few shots that, that we have uh, done. It, can spiral to way more costs if you're waiting for it. Anyways, let's just double check that. Operatives have made contact with the Sinidran called Peter Abrahams. Citizens are currently engaged in a scheduled debate regarding the ethical dimensions of terraforming, in which extended presentations by a member of the Polyphonic Tendency faction has caused a minor controversy. We'll wait, and we got some food out of it. Very nice. Trading, no, terms are not acceptable. So what do we have here? Living crystal quarry, what do we have here? Protein mutane field. Still thinking, it's potentially too early. We made it out with our lives. potentially too early and by the way this here also says send a manned aircraft to obtain uh, mm, exotic materials so it seems we need to send an aircraft there uh, there is another unexplored site over here and over here so let's move to there first personal we got new recruits cool 
Miss Tavian, incoming attack, and no one is telling me about that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pandorans will reach Mist Haven in 24 hours. Okay, well, our team will be there, but thanks for uh, me finding out, like, via this shitty screen. And that's really, the game is not doing a very good job. Uh, if you're being attacked, you shouldn't put that into a footnote. By the way, have you read the memo? No? Bad luck for you. Uh, too late, buddy. Anyways. Uh, we do have Born in the USA, and I want to double check who's. Uh, this is our next team. So we got an infiltrator. I uh, think this here is a sniper, right? Sniper? No, heavies. I'm still getting used to the symbols. So we got two heavies uh, <clears throat> a sniper and an infiltrator. Okay, we can work with that. Um, if we're now going for recruits. We got another heavy and two snipers. Well, hmm. These guys have four. They do have two more rooms. So what I'm hoping is that I could just splice assaults in as and when needed. And we're just going to start with what we do have. So close quarter specialist gets shotgun proficiency and melee proficiency. Sword rifle proficiency, see that's what I'm talking about. You're recruited immediately, because we can use you. Born in the USA. Healer, uh, bonus healing and willpower. Reckless. Strong arm. And didn't we already have two heavies here? Hmm. Now that's not 100% optimal. I wanted to have an assault. But on face value, uh, since one of the snipers effectively can be a assault uh, due, to, due to their abilities, we'll just take another sniper. Good, so. We do have a team of six. We're still waiting for the Manticore. Yep. And then some decent body armor. Which I don't even know what we need that for at the moment. We'll we'll get there. I would much rather create a few weapons or just use the material for something else. This here is helpful. One, two, three, four, five for the prime team. Good. Anyways, back to what I was uh, uh, what I was originally doing. So now that we have fixed the recruits and we have team three on the way and we have uh, the aircraft on the way, uh, let's fix the issues here. And the senders had a level up. Damage and speed is increased proportionally or shotgun proficiency and melee uh, weapon damage. Uh, I like both actually. He can't afford both but having that will let him deal 20% more damage with the hammer and I really like that. Also it fixes his inability to use shotguns. Good, so let's shortly go through their equipment. This here looks fine for me. I guess I would put it that way though, because last time the switching was quite costly. Okay, just producing a couple of uh, these. And always, oh wait.
And I know I can also put them there to manufacture. Good, Tyler is fine. Maybe a bit more ammunition would be helpful. Tyler's still waiting for that second class. Natalia is good. Yeah, we pretty much screwed ourselves the last time. By not having enough ammunition, that won't happen again. Inappropriate Murphy doesn't really need the second weapon. This weapon, however, is also not really good. So I'm wondering, like, what kind of weapon would we give him? Maybe it is really... That extra weapon and an extra healing kit. Okay, here we had the shotgun just for the boss. I don't know, should I give these guys shotguns? Likely not a good um, option generally. Rather, some extensive, uh, more extensive healing. Again, we had shotguns here because we needed maximum damage. Good. So just wanted to get the second team in order. And yeah, 13 is fine. So now back to the actual action. We're going to fly down here in time. Just need to speed that up a bit. Personal of the second, um, we are loading you guys into Phoenix Point. And just to be a bit more efficient, we're going to use the aircraft. And we're trading. Two for 12, yes, thank you. Two for 10, mm, not needed. We do have a lot of food. Missed the trading window here. Four for five, good. Eight for two, even better. All right, we're trading nicely. Nine for two is okay. Four for six, also okay. Twenty hours, okay. We're still having 17 hours, so we're okay. Oh. 
Our operators have discover, uh, discovered a new Jericho listening post used to spy on the Sanhedrin and the disciples of Anu. Uh, the facility is fully automated. Hmm. Uh, I think we're we're going to uh, covertly sabotage the facility. And maybe that'll give us some bonus in the future, who knows. Okay, what are we going to do with that team? It's so finicky on, on the scope, you need to manage multiple teams throughout multiple days, all at the same time. I don't know guys, uh, maybe I'm just overdoing it, uh, I have no idea, but this year gets quite micromanagement intensive. We had another question mark here. Okay, so that's our next big thing. Still got 16 hours. That'll be fine. Starting to explore. Construction, fabrication plant and research lab. We got one more fabrication plant. Now finally. Born in the USA begins with it. How much does a training facility cost? 250. Now let's slowly start investing in that because we need that. Four for six, okay. How's the second team looking? Pretty much A okay. So we're going back to the base. I need to find bases that want to trade tech. We have some over here and we have a whole cluster down here. Good, we're not going to do that mission now because we want to be in tip top. Well, are we going to do that mission now? Might as well. And then we're getting ready for the Mist Haven attack. We should be in, still in, in good uh, shape. In terms of research, yeah, Mist, uh, Mist Repeller deployment, that would be great. Keeps a uh, significant uh, Mist Repeller facility available for construction. Okay, that would be good. That would be really good. Um, the next facility attack will also give us a chance to stun more of the enemies, paralyze them, um, as we currently have a few of them here. And all we can do at the moment is harvest them for food. Uh, we still have plenty of time, uh, uh, space uh, to have more of them. Okay, so uh, team number three kind of moves to here, uh, then here, and then here to explore. Bit of trading, exploration. We're going to do that over there, and then team number two. Um, hmm. Good question. I mean, they are currently as currently as it stands, they are getting experience, which they elsewise wouldn't. Uh, take inappropriate Murphy, for instance. Just got a level just for sitting here. So, I guess what I'm saying is, 
if there is nothing like fundamentally ground shattering happening we could use the aircraft kind of fly up here and maybe use the buggy uh, in the aircraft that should be a manned resource and maybe then we're getting exotic materials out of it the only problem is this aircraft is not really fast but I'm struggling to find missions guys and maybe one of the problems that I'm having is my unwillingness to break with in individuals um, we're going to see because the mission here is not changing their attitude I will see if I if I can continue to keep good attitude with all of them um, and if it's not the case then either of these two factions would need to be sacked which would immediately give us way more missions because all of a sudden we can continuously raid but I still want to try the, in this playthrough the path of being okay with all three of them and see if it works or if I'm just uh, being delusional Okay, cool. Anyways, uh, let's jump into the next mission and we'll keep that in this episode because why not? Uh, we are fighting the Pandorans, uh, have our prime team, so let's go. Good, we landed. Let's take a good look what we're up against this time. We're not very, very lucky with the crates. We would. Uh, I really want to get those three crates but it means we'll need to fight a bit it means we will need to fight a bit let's first of all frenzy ourselves Material crates, always very welcome. None of the ammunition is really needed. Can we move close enough to hit the guy? Potentially not, right? Well, tell you what. Head is disabled. He goes invisible. We'll counter that with Grell. Moving up. Spotting out dozens of enemies in the process. Still at the very same spot, got you. Well, we got a crate down there. Maybe something for Drangs to grab. this oh that's uh, one of those defender weapons I'll trade that for a shotgun also solves the encumbrance problem
demolishing and creating a new pathway. Good, so we got two further crates back there. Pushing on. Dash is over. Dashes even further. And eliminates uh, the guy. He gets his uh, will points even back, which is fun. Okay. Um, one, two, here. Taking our hammer, move all the way up to there, hit, and kill. Out of curiosity, nothing on the ground. Good, then there's the tentacle uh, guy up there. I don't want to use grenades, it's too expensive, not for those smaller enemies. Moves over. And I really don't have a great way of dealing with him. So we'll extend our shield. This guy can drop down. Uh, I want to go over there. To get the loot though. Who does have loot left over? Drinks does not. We're filled up. I suppose Drell has quite a bit, so she could run in. We have no exit on the other side. We have one over here, though, so we could take the loot and, and take the exit over here. I was born ready. On the lookout. Overwatching. Five by five. And overwatching just in case. He does have enough loot, uh, enough space for loot. Jump over, get the loot, get out. We do have two. Well, this guy here has a lot of offense, but not a lot of defense, so let's just stay out of line of sight and we're fine. We, I can see that there are quite a few enemies coming in. Hmm. 
Okay, well, tell you what. All set. Let's ready to fire. Free aim. Yeah, that that will be a kill. Weapon here, new. But Dranks does have the free switch, so just double checking. This ain't too bad. One. So you got a dash left over. Shadow Realm moves up. Oh, look at that. Our best friends. Jumping over one. Falling down two. Takes gun in the hand. Oh, okay. I see. That is a problem. Miscalculated his movement there. Not good. Let's wait until that thing opens its mouth. successful and uh, we got another problem coming in I don't know if it is worth the squeeze here moves over quick aim Takes off the arm. <laughs> and we're overwatching. Okay, well, we got a couple of on unresolved uh, topics here. War cry reveals that the guy is right here. So if that's the case, we're going around the corner.
more crying as well can't really get away unfortunately maybe we're maybe we're uh, seeing him attaching us to uh, attaching themselves to our face but that's okay we can remove it next turn so yeah i'm still not 100 percent sure if this extra loot here is worth all of the hassle but i suppose we're going to find out in a second the problem is the enemies are dealing too much damage to not deal with them so you have to always spend actions in order to deal with them Complete surprise. Absolute shocker. So the paralysis has taken away some of our actions. I see. solves uh, the problem of this guy and I think Grell was the one with enough uh, with enough carrying capacity this turn we can't really do much thanks to the paralysis and we can't cure it as well not great Moving a bit closer. Jumping up. Moving to here. Regaining will points by opening the crate. And before I touch anything, War Cry. And now we can maybe loot. Yes, we can. Thank you. That and that. And we're taking a magazine. And we regularly need heavy ammunition as well, so that's good loot. There's still loot further down below. Ian cannot pick it up, it's full. I think Grell would need to pick it up and we got some more loot over there. Which, if we look at our sniper, Euler, could be the one picking it up. Gotta keep going. Moves up. Never give up. Moves up even further. This guy is hampered by Warshout, and we can simply loot. Great loot, by the way. What is this here? Chimera grenade? Synhydrin poison grenade. Looks dope. Uh, maybe we can reverse engineer it. So I'm trading ammunition 
for the option to reverse engineer and a lot of materials. Got one last crate down there. Which I think we can work with jumping down, handing over all of the items to Grell, uh, then moving in and moving out. I'm here. I think we could shoot and then afterwards Ready to fire. still move over. Good hit. And Dilly's exit zone might be actually over here. Which begs the question, shall we just try to kill this guy? Might be the better choice. And Dilly is close to an exit. And just secures this flank over here. Uh, once we're at it... There we go. End of turn. <clears throat> Alright. The guy has a pretty decent uh, ability to hit. Honestly, wasn't fully expecting that. We're instilling frenzy on everyone again. This time over encumbered. But we would be able to get out now. In terms of movement here, let's test the following. <sighs> Who can I hand over these items? Who is fast and has slots left no one is I think we might as well just call it a day Moving in will be two action units and two jumps. Would need war scream as well. Let's just try to bo uh, booby out. Grell is too paralyzed in order to do something meaningful. We'll use Jarenx and his shield to cover whoever is left. All set. Double time. Euler moves up. And although it costs us a bit of willpower. <laughs> I think the war cry is still very much worth it. For 
strength moves to here. Extends the shield. is moving out I'm here. but not without creating a big fat overwatch and I think we're done oh, he's even panicked now the shield definitely worked out well. Just what I was hoping it would do. Shattered Realm. Leaves. Grell. Leaves. E and the Butcher own. Leaves. Drinks, leaves, moving out. Billy leaves and all the leaves. It overall okay. Could have maybe pushed it a bit, a tiny bit further, but I think we got a good amount of loot. Twelve out of sixteen. That's fine. And uh, Dilly G is the first one with level 7 even. Congratulations, Dilly. So, that's good. That is That was a good mission. We didn't want to push it too far as well because the same guys are going for a base uh, protection mission. Came out with a uh, uh, 1,200 in material. Costed a little bit more. Yeah, but really found a nice happy medium there. I'm happy. Okay, Dilly has a couple of options. Onslaught is not bad, but Mark for Death. Marks an enemy until the end of the turn. Each hit uh, or attack from an individual gets plus 10 damage. This effect does not stack. That's really good. So, specifically against the bigger enemies, that will be wonderful. Doesn't cost actions, it's just 10 damage flat. And it says each hit. So, it would make uh, guns with high repetition even better against uh, enemies rapid clearance recovers two action points uh, for each enemy killed until the end of uh, the turn uh yes let me think about that could you use rapid clearance together with one ap melee attacks so is sniper plus plus assault or sniper plus heavy actually quite good with a lex you can jump in oh let me think that through we'll come back to you in a second assault oh so it's oh, okay it's Assault uh, who gives rapid clearance. That's not bad because I could... It's not Sniper plus something, it's actually Assault with rapid clearance. Ooh, that would be dope. Uh, our other melee character, Grell, would not have rapid clearance. But Shattered Realm does. And Jerengs theoretically could get that as well.
And Ian the Butcher Owens could get that as well. I just need to remove the torso and switch up to a Vengeance torso. Yeah, it would suck to give uh, give up the Juggernaut torso because I really like that, but wow. If he hits Rabbit Clearance and we give him melee weapon, then Ian the Butcher Owens and Shattered Realm both could just jump in, kill everything in melee and leave. Uh, funnily enough, since we don't have um, this on Grell, Grell is becoming more of a mid-ranged support. Adrenaline Rush, all ability costs a uh, maximum of one action point until the end of turn. Next turn you will be dazed. Hmm. Well, I can... Hmm. That's a good one as well. Rage Burst shoots five times spread across an arc with a direct fire weapon. For me, that really sounds like she would have these mid-ranged uh, these mid-ranged weapons assault weapons and just continues to pump out damage with adrenaline rush if she hits well that'll be good or the other alternative is boom blast and make her a heavy weapons focused uh, gal i mean having having a melee weapon as a backup never hurts but She's not having the right torso. Oh, she has the Vengeance torso. Never mind. But maybe, for her, uh, the Juggernaut torso is actually better. I should have thought that through a bit earlier. Maybe she has the Juggernaut uh, torso and works together with... Um, with... What's the other one? Oh yeah, here, Jarenx. Um Who also has a jug and a torso, right? Yeah. So then she and Jarenx would be the uh, the kind of mid-ranged, uh, we do have a shield up type, uh, type of characters. I think that would be fitting. Uh, don't have a second class for him yet, but um, that could come. And then Shattered Realm, and Shattered Realm, and uh, Ian the Butcher Owns would be the melee characters. I like the concept. I like it. Very fitting. Good. We're changing to. The more melee style. Um, all equipment, please. Yes, thank you. Where are the hammers? Thank you, but you don't need a hammer in order to be successful in life. You can take something else, Incy Vincy. Take that Zeus grenade, for instance. There you go. Good. Crime team should always get dips on all of the equipment. And... Ian the Butcher owns. He has a lot going on for him. Uh, he can also use Boom Blasts. He actually has like three different uh, options. Which is, which is hilarious. And we have the Neuralizer for melee. Do we have a second Neuralizer? I think we did, right? So we have the neuralizing pistol here and here. That's two. 
Drank set in your Eliza. Oh yeah, so Jarenks was the one uh, with the Neuralizer. Uh, can sprint up and just stun them. In the Butrones would have a Neuralizer as well. Just need to remember that. And maybe get a another one for, uh, for Shattered Realm in the future. But yeah, once we do have the next level, that would be dope. Rapid Clearance. You could effectively just push that in and you kill them with one action point, maybe with two, uh, but you regain everything. That's a good combination, I like it. Okay, back to uh, Dilly. Accuracy, minus 10% damage dealt. And we have marked for death. Which I personally think is a fantastic skill as well. So we'll take that naturally. Which means for him, the only, que uh, the only question in the future is... Shall we... Shouldn't have, by the way, shouldn't have given him... Well, it's plus two speed, so it's not that bad. Um... But shouldn't have given him the PDFs. The pistols are good enough. Hmm. Although, what am I saying? We haven't produced the PDFs, so um, what we could do is we could try. Where is that weapon? Um, I've just looted it, so we should have one of them available. Here we go. So... Uh, direct comparison. PD, uh, PDW uh, has 10 shots versus 8, so it's better. Uh, shreds is better. Bursts is better. Effective range, similar. Needs two hands to use, okay, fair enough. But we still have a pistol, so that wouldn't be a problem. I think it's a flat up upgrade. Flat out upgrade, which those would be, those would be strong because uh, I can even overwatch with them uh, for zero uh, action points and we can take an extra shot so that's a huge increase in uh, damage really like that uh, new jericho ghost uh, ghost rifle uh, ghost pdw sorry um but yeah that's a lot of damage uh, that we could do we could theoretically get more ammunition but i think we're okay with the ammo uh, has multiple weapons can uh, can use them so maybe that was not uh, mm, Maybe that was not incorrect. Uh, this is a question, should we get more accuracy? I'm personally a fan of accuracy. Just being able to uh, to stay back and shoot. It'll come as th at the expense of damage, but I think overall, um, to be honest, we might want to skill into that. Just making them more accurate. We'll get more accuracy out of it uh, compared to the damage that we're sacrificing. And for instance, with multi-shot weapons like the Defender, uh, you would hit more shots, so the effective damage dealt would be higher. Yeah, we don't need Onslaught. Uh, what we would need, 210 is also, I think, fine. Uh, what I would want to get is more willpower on them. Uh, they are a super willpower hungry class. So that'll be the improvement for Dilly in the future. Maybe some more speed. And I definitely would uh, want to augment them. Because Dilly needs, uh, needs some sort of cyber augmentation. Good. We're moving over here. Phoenix Point Personal. Am I going to 
just let that fly up here and be in a waiting pattern. It's maybe quite risky, but we'll get good XP as a reward for it. A thousand for another priest. I want another priest. 800. 800. Yeah, I think we'll buy an another priest. Um, you know what? They could use some more experience. But generally we're fine, so let's just get them onto the ship. Tyler, Natalie, Jim, Inappropriate Murphy, The Hammer, an Asian cow, which means we leave uh, the priest uh, there. And I would like to get us a priest. And I'm hoping that there is something which we can do. Not seeing any actions here on on the African continent. There's a technician over here. Hmm. How many technicians do we have? We got one. A second one here. I would take a third one. But I also want to make sure that we're not over recruiting. We have maybe room for one or two more. Of course, if someone dies, then um, that would uh, fr free up the options. But yeah, a technician would not be the worst choice. The question is, there might be technicians over here as well. And that's re really where we could use uh, them. We currently have one technician in team three. And one technician in frozen circuit sitting around waiting for an engagement. I think a third one would make sense, but on the other continent, a third priest definitely would make sense. I have the feeling these classes are ultra strong. My favorite class so far. So yeah, we're moving over. 10 hours until we are going to be attacked. Good, we want to go to this cluster and then go to there. Research complete. New manufacturer available. We got Mr. Paller. Um, Mystery repellers are based on complex set of interconnected technologies, armor, speed, perception, stealth, blah, 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 blah. Removes all mist within two tiles whilst moving. Ooh. That's a cool one. Good, we're building a couple of those. Um, yeah, that is the point where we realize, God damn it, uh, we don't have, we don't have healing uh, here. But we got mis uh, Mist Repeller. Mist slowly be pushed back around the base location. That is perfect. And Mist will slowly be pushed back around the base location. So it needs 
this very location to work. Five days. It's almost, if you think about, this is almost like a must build in many of the locations. All soldiers in the base will recover two stamina points for each hour living in the quarters. Yeah, at the beginning the stamina regeneration was good. Let me ask, do we have anything that is less important than that? Store. I can demolish the store because we have plenty of storage capacity. Yeah, easy. And instead, build a mist repeller there. Um, how's the mist looking up here? Well, a bit of mist repellent wouldn't be too bad. Actually, I think if we're biting the bullet now, oh, we definitely need the store here. How many archaeology labs do we have? One, two, three, four. Four. Ah, eh, I leave them as is. I don't I don't know the mechanics behind it. Seems okay at the moment. And we're generating four, so maybe that is okay. Training facility is okay. Medical bay. We need the research labs. Our research is good. I mean, that is fine. Thinking about the living quarters. Those are shared as well, right? No. Those just give stamina. Hmm. Tough call. Really tough call. Um, one, two, three research labs. Maybe I need to give up on a research lab. We do have people here, so the training facility actually makes sense. But does it is the question. How many, how much personnel do we have in here? Frozen circuit at the moment, Vanessa. Cool. How's, how's Vanessa's experience looking? Like? Well, it's decent. I mean, she's getting there. So, and having someone at level three instead of level one, I can, I can see that specifically since frozen circuit, like Phoenix Point, frozen circuit and born in the USA, originally were our like bases where we wanted to station soldiers we will pick a fourth one but that is a generally a decent split this base here phoenix point makes sense this is all influence area i can even reach europe so it's actually not too bad having one more centrally in europe would be uh, in asia would be good because it covers all of asia and you could fly over i need to have one down here because it's just too far away and potentially one over here maybe even two north and south america ah. one in america is uh, is good enough which means this base here, Phoenix Point Forward Command, is the one where we actually want to station more soldiers. Which then means, if we look at Frozen Circuit, I will get rid of the Medical Bay. Training facility can stay for now. We have two, oh, we even have two training facilities. Um, yeah, with that, one needs to go. Co 
complex space management, you need to plan uh, those things um, out well in advance. So we have a training facility here and training facility here. We actually wanted to have yet another training facility. But for now, I think Mist Repellent is, is the right one. How is Alaska looking? Do we even need Mist Repellent up there? Well, it wouldn't hurt. But we needed more in Born in the USA bases. Uh, born in the USA. As a training facility. Another training facility. That's not bad. We want more training facilities. But I also want Mist Repellent. Cool. So these two are uh, reserved for training facilities because the guys that are coming here are all newbies and they need to they need to level up quickly. If you look at at the personnel here, born in the USA, we still do have. I mean, they are making progress, but we still have a team that needs uh, to level up. They don't even have uh, they don't even have equipment at, at the moment but we'll get there so with the mist repellents we would uh, cover that and that and this is super important here for mist haven and that it would be great uh, here as well next base that uh, goes online will be this one here phoenix point forward command because that'll that'll be the base where i also put plenty of trainings facilities uh, in um, a bit of healing and so on so that we can recover fast it's effectively the standard haven where you want to fly uh, where you want to fly to okay good we're good we're good we're good Uh, Sinhydrin completed Venom Crossbow development. Sinhydrin started another research project. That's good for Sinhydrin. I like it. Uh, not full, don't want to fully trade out of uh, that resource. Good. Defend your base. That'll happen the next time. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to defend um, all of the bases, uh, then I need your support. So uh, that means a like uh, for this video goes a long way. Gives us some resources to deal with. And uh, yeah, there we go. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.